<laughs> hey guys, Dr. S here, popping on what's going on. Happy Friday. Um, I just wanted to share something really, really quickly. So Dr. S here, dropping nuggets you didn't know you needed. And as always, it is my hope and prayer that they will help you be your best you. Um, maybe people will join. If you do, please say hello. Feel free to tag somebody. Let's make this interactive, although I don't plan on being on here long, but who knows. Um, so I wanted to jump on because I was thinking about some things. And y'all know when I'm thinking, when I'm being challenged, I want to share the wealth, right? I want to share the knowledge, want to share the nugget. So we're going to have a little transparent story time. Um, so I put in the title, who or what are you fighting? It's so funny how, um, as my friend Anissa says, God will circle the block. Yesterday, it was a memory that popped up of a live um, that I did like two years ago. And it was just talking about... Um, the blessing and the waiting. And so I actually like went back and looked at my own life. And it just reminded me of like how things continue to present themselves when you don't address them. So one of my challenges is, I don't want to call it the spirit of rejection. Um, but I do deal with rejection from time to time. We could take it all the way back to daddy issues. Like, you know, this is not a doctor, doctor, doctor session. Um, but we could take it back to that. We could take it back to failed relationships. We could take it back to, you know, low self, like all of the things, right? Whatever the reason, whatever the root cause, there are times that I deal with rejection, feeling rejected, not wanting to be rejected because who does? And because I deal with that sometimes, I make poor decisions when it comes to interacting with certain people, aka relationships. So in thinking about that, I have like been reminded of that. I'm like, you know what, God, let me, you know, just pump, pump the brakes a little bit. But when I do things, I try to understand the why. Why do I do this? So that I don't keep doing it. If you don't understand the reason, if you don't understand the pattern, pattern, you're bound to redo it, right? You will repeat history. So as I was thinking about this yesterday, like what is my why? I started thinking about, well, like what is actually going on? What is the battle that is going on? You know, we often talk about the flesh and it wasn't like a fleshly thing. It was more an emotional thing. So I'm like, you know, just thinking about all, all of the things. And I came up with these four battles, these four things that we can be fighting. And this may be helpful to you. If it is, comment, let me know. DM me if you don't want to comment because you don't want anybody else to know. Because I think it is important to know what you're fighting or who you're fighting because then that will help you come up with a plan of action. So the four things. One, could you be fighting God's will versus your will or God's plan versus your plan. So what do I mean by that? God's plan for your life could be for you to go back to school and get a degree in accounting. I don't know, that's random. Your plan could be to move to Vegas and become a go-go dancer. Again, random, I'm being extra because <laughs> I, I don't know. So that's God's plan for your life versus your plan for your life. You could be fighting God's will versus your flesh. So it could be, um, the Bible talks about in Romans that our carnal mind, which is actually our flesh, if you look it up in the Greek. So it be, could be God's will for our life versus our flesh. So that could be God's will is if you are single, to abstain um, from sex until you're married. But your flesh might be like, listen, I got to try the car out before I buy it. 
So that could be an example. It could be an, so number three, that was one and two. Number three could be you're fighting the battle of the law of the flesh versus the law of the mind. So also in Romans, I think this is in Romans 7. The other examples in Romans 8, I believe. Could be where, and this is where Paul is saying, when I would do right or that I would do good, that I don't do. But that what I don't want to do, I, I do do. <laughs> um, it, But it is these things at work, the law um, of my members or the law of the flesh versus the law of my mind. My, my spiritual mind wants to do the things of God, but my flesh does not. That's number three. And the fourth thing that could be your battle, could be what you're fighting, is a transformed mind versus a conformed mind. So this is all up in here where it could be the example of um, you have made a, per a personal decision, a conscious decision to do something or not do something. That's the transformed part versus doing things that may be... Um, the world says it's okay. Are you even like, oh, I mean, well, Paul says, you know, everything is not expedient, but it's not lawful. So I don't know. So it could be one of those four things. It could be several of those things all at the same time. But for me, and maybe for you, it will be helpful to determine which thing it is, because then you would know what to do for my next steps. So you have these four examples of battles, these four examples of fights that may cause you to make decisions that you don't necessarily want to make or make decisions that you do necessarily want to make, but they aren't maybe wise decisions to make. So once you figure out which one of these things that it is, then you can figure out how to fight the fight, right? How to fight the battle, how to combat the battle. <laughs> And so I was thinking about, for me, how I could do that, three things came to mind. And when I wrote those three things down, the acronym for them was PDA. And it was so funny to me. I was like, guys, you really have a sense of humor. Because I'm talking about relationships or relationship-related things. And when you think of PDA, you think of public displays of affection and that's not the answer. That's, that, that was not what he gave me. But I just thought that was so funny that that ended up kind of accidentally. That wasn't a conscious decision as I was writing down <laughs> what God said, but that's what it ended up being. Anyway, what were the three things, Dr. S? The three things were prayer, discipline, and accountability. So if you are battling God's plan versus your plan, if you are battling God's plan versus what your flesh wants to do, if you are battling your flesh versus your mind, or if you are battling a transformed versus a, a conformed mind, start with prayer. When you know which one of those things it is, that will help you direct your prayer. Lord, I know that I've been attempting to do my will. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 12, I believe it is, there is a way that seems right unto man, but that way leads to death. Your word says in Jeremiah 29, 11, when you love to quote that one, you know the plans that you have for me and the plans to prosper. And that those are the plans that I want for my life. I don't, I don't want it to be my will, God. I want it to be your will. You can pray that. If it is a, a a prayer of his will versus your flesh, you know how to, you can pray for that. If it is a prayer of it's an internal battle, God, I, I want to have the mind of Christ. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm no longer a slave to the members of my body, but I am now subjected to you. And because I have the mind of Christ, I do the things that Christ does. If it's a, situation where it's the transformed versus the conformed mind again god i i, I put on the full armor of god um, i wear the helmet of salvation my mind is focused on you you know your word says you know he 
who keeps his mind, his eyes stayed on you, you will keep him in perfect peace. So you know how to pray when you know which battle that it is. That helps give you that helps to give you some guidance and some direction. So that's first thing, the P. The D is discipline. So many of us know the power of prayer. Many of us know what to do. We just don't do it. Or we don't do it consistently. Or we don't do it when we're feeling good and strong and positive. And then when these attacks come or these um, vain imaginations pop up or these situations present themselves that when we're in our right mind, we know it's the, the devil or, you know, a test or a counterfeit because we have not been disciplined in those things that we know, then we falter, right? So we know prayer is important, then let us pray. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean always being on your knees. That does not mean always in your prayer closet. That does not mean, um, you know, that you have to be at the altar or at a church. That means internally, God help me. <laughs> Jesus, that's a prayer. Um, and the Bible says, when you know not how to pray, the spirit makes utterance for you. So we know that we need to pray. Discipline helps us to stay focused in that prayer, helps us to stay focused in fasting, helps us stay focused in reading and studying the Bible, helps us stay focused in not going places that we know aren't good for us or doing things that we know will be a temptation for us. I don't drink. Drinking is not an issue for me. It has never been an issue for me. But if I know I was abstaining from alcohol, if I know that alcohol is a struggle for me, hanging out at the bar it's probably not a good idea. If you struggle with sex and fornication and lust, being on dating apps, hooking up with it, being in place where you can hook up, that's probably not a good idea for you. That's discipline, right? That's wisdom. That's making wise choices that are going to help you fight these battles that may be presenting themselves. So P, prayer, D, discipline, A, is accountability. I know, I feel like for a minute there, all we saw was posts about accountability, be accountable, be accountable, have an accountability partner. I don't know if we're still doing that, but we need to. We need to have some type of accountability, personal accountability, have a friend group that will help you stay accountable, have leadership that will help you stay accountable, get a therapist that will help you stay accountable. Listen, all of those aspects, those things are real because if you are trying to fight some of these battles alone, probably you're not going to be successful. We just being real. Probably you're going to need some help. So if you are feeling the itch that you want to scratch, but you can call your home girl, you can call your homeboy, you can talk to your pastor you can make an appointment with your therapist that is going to hold you accountable to continuing to walk the path that is destined for you to walk right everybody's accountability might look a little bit different we all need accountability how that accountability looks might be slightly different depending on what you're doing real talk to use my alcohol example, you might need to be an AA. You might need a sponsor. I don't need a sponsor, but you might need a sponsor for your level of accountability. You might need somebody to be like, listen, I'm about to put this 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 app on my phone. No, you might not want to do that. No, you might want to get, get off. You, that might not be a wise choice for what you're trying to do in this season. And when you have an accountability partner or when you have people that you're being accountable to listen to them <laughs> don't have i would encourage us not to have accountability partners and then not use them or not heed them when they give us boundaries when they help us when they help to remind us of the things that we've set forth so dr s what were you talking about today i was talking about the importance of knowing which battle which fight that you're having, who or what you're fighting. I mentioned four things. If you didn't catch it, watch the replay. Um, and I 
seriously encourage you to write this, these things down. Like these nuggets, I'm telling you, they are really for real, for real, for real to help you be your best you. <laughs> I'm the end of God. So write down those four things. Scripture references, like I said, for, for God's plan versus your plan. I mentioned um, Proverbs 14. I mentioned Jeremiah of 29 also we mentioned a lot proverbs 5 lean not to your own understanding because our plans aren't always the brightest of ideas for god versus your flesh i believe it's romans 8 um where it talks about our carnal mind being in enmity with god for um the law of the flesh versus the law of the mind that's romans 7 all of romans I would encourage us to read if you haven't or haven't read it in a while. But that talks about when Paul was like, what I would do, I don't do. And what I ain't trying to do, that's what I do do. Read that. And then the fourth one is a transformed mind versus a conformed mind. Romans 12, 1. And then the three things you can do once you determine which fight, what you're fighting, who you're fighting, then you know how to pray. PDA. You can, it will direct your prayer. We need to follow through with the discipline part. And we definitely, definitely, definitely need to have an accountability partner, team, crew, whatever the case may be. So I just wanted to share that with you all. I pray that it has been helpful um, to you, for you. If it has, like I said, comment below. Or if it's like, you know what, Dr. S, this, this is really serious for me and I really am kind of struggling but I don't want to put it in the comments, DM me. Like, that's that's the whole thing. And by the way, I'll throw this out here. Probably not going to really publicize it for real till in the new year, but I, I am a, a therapist and I'm about to start doing consulting. Like, very, like, seriously, I keep mentioning it, but like, ah. but these are the types of things that we can talk about in a consulting session, in a consulting meeting. So hit me up. Let me know. So I love you guys. Enjoy your Friday really quickly before I get off. Remember, you have until November 20th to pre-order your new merch, C-shirts, apparel at drchalet.com slash shop. Former things, old, um, older designs are also available. Don't click on shop though. Go to Dr. Chalet and then click on available products. I think is what it is. If you wanted to get some of the older um, designs. Anyway, new merch. You can pre-order um, through November 20th. And then if you are in the St. Louis area, you can join us on December 9th for the pop-up shop um, and pop-in prayer event. If you're not local, it's totally fine. Click the shipping option and I will ship them to you after the event um other things you could be mindful of is the when queens pray um zoom call that is happening next thursday the 16th and then a special edition word of mouth with dr s where doctors mc and dr a will be joining me on monday november 20th and then if you haven't marked on your calendar April 13th, 2024. Ladies, please do that for the fourth annual Roar Like a Lioness Women's Conference. So that was a lot. A mouthful. So I love you guys. Enjoy your Friday. And I'll talk to you soon. Be blessed, Dr. S.